everybody, it's Andrea and today we're going to continue the Mariner Scrap Book Tour with Volume 6. As you can see this is a different one from the previous five. Uh, this is a photo album I bought in Macro Cash and Carry in Hell's Owen. Um, because I couldn't, I didn't, and it was cheaper than the ones from W. H. Smith, although it's, uh, it's slightly bigger. Uh, so yeah, it was great. So it's just a slightly different one. Still does the job. We've still got a picture of Marilyn. Um, on the front, this is a picture that was taken of her, uh, the day she announced her divorce from Joe DiMaggio. I thought I'd give you a bit of information on the picture. And this one has got quite a lot of articles along the same theme to start with. Um, so we've got some pictures of Marilyn first. <laughs> okay. Uh, just to break it up. And then we've got an article called Find My Marilyn, Hubby's Fear for Missing Monroe Double. Um, yeah, 1997, this woman went missing. Um thought she was Marilyn, disappeared uh, and it was on all the papers because she liked to dress up as Marilyn and she ran a fancy dress shop. She doesn't really look like Marilyn. Um, I do believe she is home and she was found not long after and she is safe which is the main thing but the, partly I think it was a publicity stunt. Again, my missing Marilyn, my Marilyn is missing, she doesn't anything like Marilyn but she does like the 50s which is always good and then mystery of Mrs. missing Marilyn look like. And she has a Cadillac, which is nice. Um, so there was a lot about that, and I just popped them all in. And then there's a tiny little article that was in the Star to say, I cracked up like Marilyn, which is when she, she turned up, and you can't really see it because it's really tiny. Hang on. Let me see if I can zoom in and find it, because it's all the way up here. There you are. I cracked up like Marilyn. Um, and it just says about... Uh, um, she was stressed from running her fancy dress shop. I'm not saying a word because I suffer from stress and depression, so I can't say what she went through at the time. I thought it was a bit odd, but it could well have been genuine. I don't know. Uh, then there's a bit about the Daily Mail, about Seymour Hersh's book, about the Kennedys, more about the Kennedys. Lawford spied on Monroe's last days for JFK. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I roll. Head, you know, face slap and eye roll. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. On to the next page. Here we have a word search. If you can see, yeah, there's a word search for uh, Marilyn Films. Uh, then there are a few ad um, ads for plates and things from the Bradford Exchange or Franklin Mint. I think, does that Franklin Mint? No, these are Bradford Exchange, aren't they? I think, all of them. I, and I have these. So lovely, we like. And just some pictures of Marilyn. I'm just going to zoom out because these articles get bigger. Uh, so here we are. We have an article from The Daily Fail. Told for the first time how Sinatra planned to marry Monroe to save her from herself. Right, okay. But uh, yeah, he didn't. And uh, I don't think he would have. I don't even think she would have. But then I wasn't there, so I don't know. I don't know how she had his music on the day she died. We just got four pictures there to fill up the gap because the next picture, the 71 year itch, is about her 71st birthday. And this is a fictional interview that was published in Sunday Times magazine that was allegedly made with Marilyn on her 71st birthday if she had been alive and about what she was doing and so on. And that's quite a long article and there's some nice pictures. Nice Eve Arnold picture there and so on. So this is quite, a, as you can see, it's a big book and I'm zoomed out all the way and it's still hard to get it all in. So this is still all about that 71 year itch, about things like that, and it, this fictional interview. And then we have a Marilyn, a soldier for Jack from the Sunday Times, so it's about how, yeah, let's not go there. And then we have one that's called My Date with Marilyn by Elizabeth Cowley. And this is just about an, uh, an interview that somebody had with Marilyn in the 1950s, basically, and it tells you about what she was like. Then we have the release of the Warner Underwear Marilyn Monroe collection. Never got that. Never understood the need. And there's just pictures of the various un underwear items. Then we have an article, Do Gentlemen Really Prefer Blondes? And we get a man who says yes and a man who says no. It was just an excuse to use a picture of Marilyn, in my opinion. And that's always a good thing. <clears throat> On the next page, we have a lot of photographs. 
We do have a, a Blonde Women Aren't Just Just Aren't Fair, which is about the way that hair color, how common various hair colors and blonde's not that common. And Marilyn wasn't naturally blonde; she was uh, had auburn hair. Um, and then there's one something about the seven year itch and lots of lovely photos. Here we are. Uh, this is another article uh, advert for a uh, sculpture. And this was from the People magazine in 1998. And this is Marilyn Domes. Unless these were from the Franklin Mints. I did have this one and it broke. I will one day replace it because it's my favourite scene from a movie. <clears throat> I'm going to start coughing. On the next page we have um, Sunday Times Star magazine about face. This is... Um, Lisa Marie Presley, made up as Marilyn Monroe by Kevin Ekion. I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, it's just people, different people made up as famous people. So, they did Lisa Marie as Marilyn. And she looks fantastic. The next page we have the National Inquiry Scandals and Murders Special Issue which has Jane and Marilyn and Lana on the cover, among others. And of course we have the, uh, the article here, which is, she knew too much to live. Really? <clears throat> the next page we have an article from the Shropshire, uh, no, sorry, tell that, it's from the Birmingham Post. Um, Birmingham, UK, and it's called the P Village Pub with Marilyn as a regular. And it's, this is a, a town that wasn't really very far away from where I used to live at the time and it's a place called Clifton on Team. And there's a pub there and it's got lots of pictures of Marilyn all over the wall because the previous um, landlord loved Marilyn and when he moved out to open his own bar in Worcester, he uh, left the pictures there, basically. That's all that is. So on the next one, we've got an uh, article called A Large One From The Road. And the only reason this is in here is because this guy was banned from a, a public house, well, it's a wine bar actually, and restaurant, in Worcester for blocking the bar because he was so big. <laughs> I'm not saying. But the reason that article is in there is this is the first time I actually found out about, I knew that this, this existed from the previous article, but they'd come up quite quickly together. And it was a wine bar um, in Worcester called Miss Monroe's. I'd, it's something else now, it, wine and cellar bar it was. Um, and I went in there several times. Because there were pictures of Marilyn Monroe. He changed it into more of a sports bar afterwards, which was a shame. But hey, business is business and he's there to make money. And I certainly appreciate that. But we went in there several times and had a few drinks. Just to, to have a look at the Marilyn stuff on the wall. <laughs> and then there's a little bit about from the Daily Mail from about, uh, about Frank Sinatra. And on the next page, we've got the face that fetched a cool 10 million, and it's about the sale of an Andy Warhol painting. And then we got um, something about some books. And this is Marilyn Hitler and Me, The Mel Memoirs of Milton Shulman. I've never read it, I've got to be honest. Um, I tend to only buy books that are dedicated to Marilyn. Occasionally, I'll pick up other ones. If I saw it somewhere, I would probably pick it up. Uh, if I was in here why it was there, I'd pick it up, or if I saw it down um, my local second handbook shop, absolutely. And again, here's a bit, oh god, this one I've put in this way just because it's such a long, big article. About Andy Warhol, and uh, Warhol isn't the real thing. Also about why, why do people like it, you know, why do they get it? Um... And he says, he doesn't, she doesn't understand why they um, go for so high. Uh, it's not something I get. I don't like the Andy Warhol prints. I must be the only Marilyn fan who doesn't. I'd rather have a good photograph of her, a real photograph of her, but um, yeah, no. So on here we have a few photographs of Marilyn and an article from a magazine that I sometimes still buy. And that's Amateur Photographer. And Terry Hope gets stars in his eyes as he finds this week's vintage AP bursts and scenes with sexy blondes. And this was, this was about, um, uh, they used to do this in amateur photography, they'd print a bit from one of the issues or some information about it and what was in that magazine that month. So on the 23rd of May 1956, it was all about, there were blondes, um, a photographer Baron, who 
perhaps the best picture of the lot featured Marilyn Monroe. So there's a little bit about Marilyn uh, in there. Now she's been actually in Amateur Photographer a few times and you will see that as we go through the books. The next one is National Enquirer and it's called Papa's Pinups. And this is about pinups through the years uh, who were put up in the walls of barracks and soldiers' bedrooms. So we've got obviously Marilyn in the Korean War, we've got Jane Mansfield, Bridget Bardot, Eve Gardner, Rita Hayworth, Betty Grable, the most famous pinup of all from the 40s, obviously. She was Betty Grable. Um, again, about the National Enquirer, this is about. Um, her doing a radio broadcast at NBC. And it's just a bit about the history of my bit. I think it's any excuse to put a picture of Marilyn in at some points, to be honest. They really do. Because Marilyn sells. And the next page is, again, the Birmingham Post. Uh, pictures throw, unseen, uh, throw light on the unseen face of Marilyn. This is about the Earl Leaf book from beginning to end. It's a lovely book. I don't know if I fe featured it. If I haven't, I certainly will. I need to make a list of what I've done. And the unusual thing about the Earl Leaf photographs is he photographed her at the beginning. So 1951, when she was first, before she was well known. All the way through the next decade until she died. And he took some photographs of her at the 1962 Golden Globe Awards. Which is why his his collection of photos is quite unique. Because they do follow her career almost from beginning to end. And show how she changed through the years. So um, yeah, that's a lovely, lovely book. Then the next article is again back to Jerry Halliwell. Jerry's new look is Viva the 50s. Star steps out in Marilyn Look. Really... The only thing that's similar is a full neck dress and a full skirt. That's the only thing it's like. She's not dressing up as Marilyn. She's, it was a hot summer. She's wearing a cool summer dress. <laughs> and again, any excuse to put Marilyn in the papers. That's, I swear that's all it is. Uh, next was official. This woman's not attractive and we've got the formula to, to prove it. Um, I think it's uh, just a load of nonsense. Science doesn't explain attraction and why people think some people are beautiful and some people aren't. Some people find Marilyn really attractive, some people don't. Some people find um, Ava Gardner attractive, some people don't. Some people find Elizabeth Taylor, some people don't. Jean Harlow. It's, it's all a matter of different people's perception. I don't think you can put a formula on it. So on here we've got a big, big picture of Marilyn taken by Willie Rizzo in 62. And there's a bit about the Sheridan Morney book and Ruth Leon about Marilyn Monroe. Not the best book, in fact, it's one of the worst, but there you go, worst um, factual. The next page, we have the first, uh, an excerpt from the Times from Barbara Lehman's book. It's the second uh, extract. I don't have the first in this album, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure why, but I should have had it all because at the time the person I was with actually read the Times on a daily basis, but for some reason I didn't get the first extract, but never mind. So this is about Marilyn uh, by uh, Barbara Leeming and this is about All Right Marilyn, Be Sexy said Olivier so it's about the relationship between Marilyn and Olivier, Olivier on the set of The Prince and the Showgirl. And this one is The End of the Honeymoon and this is the third extract from the book by Barbara Leeming and so it's about the end of her marriage to Arthur Miller. Now, this one is the first time this ever came up, when Marilyn dressed up as a lover's wife. This is Marilyn wearing a black wig, and apparently she must be dressing up as Jackie Kennedy. It's actually not. Basically, during the Burt Stern shoot, they did the nudes, and then Vogue magazine said they wanted to lay her out in a fashion uh, layout. So they brought a load of clothes and wigs and jewellery and dressed her up in various uh, uh, items. And one of the items happened to be a black wig. Um, it was a, a fashion spread for Vogue. It wasn't actually deliberately dressed up as Jackie Kennedy. That is a modern perception on Marilyn. 
If you go back and look at it in the context of 1962, you'll find it was just part of a Vogue fashion shoot. If you read the book, The Complete, The, the, the Last Sitting or The Complete Last Sitting, there is no mention, even though these books were written in the 70s and 80s when the Kennedy things was rife, that she was dressing up as, as Jackie. So there you go. So the next article is from the Daily Mail Saturday magazine or from the Saturday papers. Cover girl from a day and what they did is they took a load of people uh, dressed them up as various stars and photographed them copying a magazine cover. So this girl named Charlotte um, dressed up as Marilyn and copied the life picture. Not bad, not brilliant, but it's all right. Uh, on the next page, we're back to the Inquirer, I believe. Yeah, National Inquirer. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, Hollywood Legends. A hug, a kind word, and a tight sweater to the little North Orphan, orphan, orphan Norma Jean, what love is. So this is about Marilyn growing up. There's some nice pictures, don't get me wrong. Um, but as with the National Inquirer, it's a matter of going, really? Then we have... Family Outraged, his new book tells of Bobby Kennedy's secret life of drugs, brawls and sexcapades. And of course, it has to include Marilyn because everything does. <laughs> because they were her contemporaries. But it's from a National Enquirer, so we don't really care. Uh, the next one is an article that says Princess Betrayed. And this is a review of the book by Barbara Lee by the author Sheridan Morley, who also wrote a book on Marilyn, so it could be sour grapes, but I don't know. It's been a long time since I've read Barbara Lee book. So that's that one. On the next page, we have Empire Magazine's 100 Sexiest Stars, and that was uh, October 1998. And Marilyn was at number 46. I have no idea who was at number one. Because I only wanted the bit with Marilyn in it, so there we go. And then on the next page, we have some of the Andy Warhol shots, and turn it around. There's Anna Nicole Smith. I don't like her makeup in that picture. I think she looks over made up. So it's not a very nice picture of Hannah. I think they, there's so many better ones of her. And then next is, did the Kennedys kill Marilyn? Here we go again. A sensational new book claims to uncover the real truth about Marilyn Rose's death. Donald H. Wolf, book debunked by many, many um, uh, scholars, including uh, Mary Jane Craig. So there you go. So it's a bit of an eye roll, but it all adds to the Marilyn collection. And there's a lovely picture of her, an Eve Arnold one on that page. And this carries on for the next two and a bit page, <laughs> pages of a picture of her house and so on. Then we've got a nice uh, Bert Stern picture of her from the Sunday Times money section. Um, and this is because the collection of photographs was uh, coming up for sale, apparently. And here's another article about that. Collector snap up the stars. Um, so here we've got a picture of Jean Harlow in the nude at Griffith Park taken by Edward, Edwin Bauer Hesse in 29 um, and it just goes through some of the pictures that were uh, for sale like Greta Garbo, Elizabeth Taylor, Marlene Dietrich and the 10 pictures by Bert Stern of Marilyn and there's quite a bit about Marilyn and then it tells you about sort of prices you'll, you will pay and there's some tips on preserving your collection Next one is from the Daily Mail. Murder of Marilyn Monroe, the proof, except for there is no proof. How secret CIA tapes and the confessions of key witnesses all point to an assassination. Right, these tapes have never been made public, these alleged tapes. The only way I will believe them is if I ever hear them with my own ears. Until they make them that public that I can uh, go and listen to them um, myself. And I mean the original tapes, not copies. I'm not gonna believe any of this nonsense, I'm sorry. Again, there we go. And then this continues on uh, in the last hours of a legend. And this is all because of this flaming Donald Wolf book. Honestly, some people need to be made accountable for the lies and rumours and rubbish that they've printed over the years. But nice pictures. <laughs> and then on the next page, we're near the end of this one. So this is actually, they're getting longer and shorter and longer and shorter was the National Enquirer was Marilyn's death, suicide or murder, the mystery remains. So at this point, they're actually saying it uh, could have been murder, could have been suicide. But again, there's the Kennedys nonsense. 
And then the next page is, the next bit, bit is Tragic Marilyn was a joy to work with. This is from the Daily Mail. This is um, a lady named Sylvia Crowhurst who said she worked with Marianne, Marilyn on the film of The Prince and the Showgirl. I don't know, I'd have to check the crew list. But at least it's somebody sticking up for Marilyn for a change, which is always nice. And on the last page we just have a little um, joke. What's the definition, definition of a husband? A man who is a good lover when he is chiefly betraying his wife. So, and they had a whole lot of different jokes and they used Marilyn for some reason and Tom Yule, no idea where, but probably because Seven Rich. Um, and I will fill that page up at some point. You get to the point now where I stopped filling in the gaps with pictures for some reason and I don't know why, but it's something I will get back to. So that is volume six of the Marilyn Monroe scrapbook collection. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you are enjoying this continuing series. Please let me know if you want me to continue by leaving, sorry, I've just kicked the tripod, um, leaving uh, comments down below if you still want me to continue or if you're bored, tell me to stop. I don't mind. Um, let me know what else you would like to see. Are there any particular Marilyn books you want me to review or spotlight? If I haven't already spotlighted them, let me know and I will certainly film those videos as soon as I can. So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a lovely day and I will see you all soon. Bye!